if you're where you're sitting, you can't you can't see everybody and see all the faces. It's a really a, an enjoyment to look out and uh, observe uh, each one of you and know that each one of you brings a special set of life circumstances and life experiences, uh, a testimony of of how the Lord's worked in your life, and uh, indeed one of our functions to be here today is to in our worship of the Lord to support one another, to lift one another up in prayer uh, as, as we go through the service, to uh, share with one another afterwards, to be mindful of one another. I would like to, uh, I, I don't know if the, uh, the presider over, over this service, uh, Brother Barber, is going to do this, so I'm going to steal his thunder if, if he was planning to. I wanted to uh, have some introductions. We've got, uh, Albert, can you uh, introduce, uh, between you and Jackie, there are some people with whom I'm not uh, terribly familiar. If you would uh, uh, make sure and uh, give us an introduction of those. Aha, uh -huh, prospective. Very interesting. Thank you so much. I gather from your introductions that uh, probably everybody else knew, knew everyone here, and, and I'm the, the odd man out. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, Hannah, you have a guest with you. Would you introduce her, please? Stand and speak real loudly so everybody can hear. So go ahead and stand. Brianna. And... You know, there's Brianna. Very good to see you, Brianna. Brianna has been here before, but I did want to uh, make sure we all met her. And you know her how? She is a school friend, a neighborhood friend? Church friend. Okay, so uh, very good. Addison has a uh, uh, excellent point. We make friends at church. I presume, is, does she go to school with you, Hannah? Not Addison, but how about Hannah? No, is she, you just know her somehow. Did she just show up on your doorstep one day? What's that? She's your cousin. Okay, great. Very good. Well, that's, that's good to know. Y'all say hi to Brianna uh, after the service. I uh, did want to uh, publicize a little bit the prayer meeting we had earlier this morning. We did have it in the sanctuary here. I would be interested to know at a later time, those of you who attended, how was your experience in terms of uh, being able to hear and so forth? Uh, I'd like to know that, but I also uh, want to encourage each one of us to take advantage of that worship opportunity. First uh, Sunday of every month in, instead of our Sunday school time we have our prayer meeting time it is for all ages we would look for all ages to, to uh, be prayerful and to share with us in prayer and uh, how the Lord's working in their life uh, so and I, I was personally uplifted by the service as well okay uh, we had a Sunday school meeting last Thursday uh, just the short version is I'm going to be sending out by email kind of a digest of things that went on as we kind of move into the next step. I didn't expect that to be the end-all be-all meeting, um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, also regarding our church cleaning, at, uh, at this point, uh, when your turn to clean comes up, let's do the best we can. Now basically that's going to be check the bathrooms, yeah, well, I don't know that we, I don't think we have a church-owned vacuum cleaner yet since the, uh, since the fire. So pick up the big pieces, get your Bissell out, or uh, bring, bring your own vacuum cleaner for the sanctuary in particular. There, there is a vacuum in the rock, and right now, I'm not sure where it is because we kind of made a change in uh, where things were stored. Uh, John, does anything ring a bell when we did the centennial clean out as to where that uh, 
vacuum cleaner might be. If not, that's fine. But. Okay, probably in the room behind the stage, which is across in a little caddy corner from the ladies' parlor door. Uh, but I haven't checked in there recently myself to know. But uh, I do have, okay, I'll just leave it at that. That's where we are uh, right now. Uh, how about uh, good news items, birthdays, other good news? Birthdays are good news. I will assume birthdays are good news. Yes, Beth. Oh. That's cool. Kaylee is on a robotics team at Davidson. They're at Auburn as we speak, and they are, you said, at second place right now? So, that's right. Second place uh, today to go. That's cool. That's really neat. She think that'll be her, uh, maybe something she'll pursue? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right, John, I did hear the, the ESPN um, dinger go off about the college football uh, playoff. Is that what you're? Okay, he had his iPhone out or his phone out, and I thought, oh, boy, here it comes. That is good. Excellent. And tell me his name again. Spelled like growl? Gravel. Gravel, okay. Gravel. I'm glad I asked. I would have gone off thinking something crazy. Okay. Terrific. Uh, that is good news. Others? Okay. Uh, Appreciate that very much. Um, are there those on the uh, prayer list we need to update? I will tell you at this point that I did uh, neglect one to, to make sure one was added, which was discussed last week, and that's Lois's son, Frank Jr., who has had a, uh, uh, a bad diagnosis uh, regarding uh, cancer. We do want to continue to remember Frank. Um, there are those who are mentioned at the prayer meeting. Do we want to add those to the list? Peggy, did you want to add your friends, uh, Malcolm and Corinne Powell, I believe? Um, they're dealing with uh, just issues of being elderly and, and having needs along that line. Uh, Joyce mentioned, uh, where'd you go, Joyce? There you are. Uh, did you want to include Don Booker on the prayer list? Very good. Are there, yeah, Kevin, I saw Kevin then, the, yeah, go ahead. Your dad? Okay, we definitely want to have John uh, as he is dealing with pneumonia, and we will keep him on our prayer list. Joe? Not this morning. I see that Gary is on our list, but yes, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, uh, Jerry. Jane Bedgood, one of Jerry's friends, and lost their home in Gatlinburg uh, this week due to the fires, the fire. Any others? Yes, Lori.
a, a disease that is threatening her life. Uh, very good. Hmm. Wow. We will add those to our prayer list. Thank you. Um, I believe I see no others, and we will continue with our worship.
I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you into the house of the worship. We pray now that God's Spirit will guide and direct those things that are said and done. I have a short scripture to read from Isaiah. I'm reading uh, from the 18th, 17th chapter. Oh, let's see, I'm in the wrong one. Hold on. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 11. I'll be reading a couple of verses. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion, and the fattening together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den, and they shall not be hurt nor destroy in all of my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
O oh God, our Father, which art in heaven, it is with joy in our hearts that we celebrate this birth of thy Son, the Lord Jesus. A very special time of year that we share in family and friends, in celebration, in the giving and receiving of gifts. And we humbly pray this morning, God, that we not lose sight of the true reason for this celebration. And that is the greatest gift in thy son, the Lord Jesus. This morning we come and assemble together as brothers and sisters, friends and family, at the table of this of the Lord Jesus, that we might partake of the emblems of his body and his blood as represented in the bread and the wine. And as we partake, God, we pray that they, that Holy Spirit that has been promised to us by thy Son, the Christ, will flow among us as a congregation, and that again we be, will be reminded of the sacrifice and the gift that thy Son gave as he gave his life, that each one of us might have a promise and a hope for life hereafter. God bless this congregation this morning. Bless it throughout this Christmas season that our hearts, our minds will be lifted up and that we truly might have joy and that we might have peace and that we might have love and that most especially we might have hope in Jesus the Christ. For these things we humbly pray now, Father, in his holy name. Amen. Today we light the Advent candle of joy. Joy is a sustained realization of God's generous movement within the world. Joy refreshes, revives, and awakens life. It is the it is the affirmation of we are, that we are loved. We have a purpose, and we are not alone. Joy bursts forth into the world like a candle lit in the dark. If you will, if you'll take your bulletin, your order of worship, that you might see there the Advent responsive prayer. And I would like to lead us in this, and remember this is a prayer. God, we lift this Advent prayer to you. That we might wait in your joy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. 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 Amen. Good morning. Dick asked me to um, bring you a quick update on our finances. Uh, many of you probably were here 
at our business meeting about a month ago, and so the numbers have not changed a lot. But I, I did want to bring just four quick numbers that I think uh, that you might be interested in and uh, might be somewhat revealing to us. And these all relate to contributions. Uh, at this point in the year, we are uh, 48 uh, weeks into the year. Uh, we've had 48 Sundays, and so I thought I would just take a look at what our contributions have looked like over those 48 Sundays. And so the first thing I did, and these are what I call friendly numbers. These are numbers that I've rounded up so that they're easy to remember, and uh, I always bring my props because that helps keep me straight and maybe keeps it in front of you. But this amount here, uh, $76,000, that's right at what we have taken in as far as Sunday contributions through these first uh, 48 weeks of the year. If you take that amount, if you divide it by 48 Sundays, this is about our average contribution each Sunday, $1,600. Uh, now, that does not mean that that's been consistent. We have had peaks and valleys. We had uh, one Sunday of maybe $4,000 plus. We've had some Sundays that have been uh, quite a few Sundays that are less than 1000 But the average uh, Sunday contributions through the year, $1,600. Okay, let's divide that up. There, are, uh, Of course, that seven to $6,000 really gets divided uh, between our world church contributions and our local contributions. And uh, you designate that, of course, on your envelopes. This number, $23,000, that's what you designated or we designated as part of our contributions that went to world church out of the 76000 If you do the math on that, then that leaves this amount, 53000 that uh, is our local. This is what uh, keeps the lights on here at, uh, locally. Um, if you remember from the, our business meeting uh, back last year when we set our budget, the number that we had designated as what we hoped to raise through this year was, 50, was 70, about $76,000. So from this, you can see that we have about four weeks to really uh, make, up, make that up. Um, the good news is, though, and, and this is what I really want to end with, the good news is that I, I think we really are blessed as a congregation, uh, not only financially, but, be, but in many ways. But financially, we... Um, we really do not have any debt. We have money in the bank. We have a savings account of about $53,000. We have a beautiful new building that has been restored and uh, we really, you know, uh, has not cost us anything out of pocket. It's really been uh, insurance reimbursed. So we really are financially, I think, in, in good standing and I, I think, uh, uh, are truly blessed. And so with that in mind, this is the scripture that I would like for us to share. And it says, and this is from the Doctrine and Covenants, you have been given the principles of generosity, rightly interpreted for new times. These principles cause every disciple to tithe faithfully in accordance with means and capacity. Those values deeply rooted in the restoration faith affirm that stewardship and discipleship cannot be divided and they are dependent upon each other. The call to respond is urgent. You are a good and faithful people Look carefully, listen attentively, and spit, sense the spirit among you. May the ushers come forward.
let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we do pause at this time to really, to really give you thanks and to acknowledge those things that we have, those blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us, and those things that we enjoy in both the material and spiritual sense. We do pray that thy spirit might always be with us and that we might carry it with us as we share and as we come in contact with those in the world. We know, dear Father in heaven, that there are many who are not as fortunate. We know that there are many who are in need, and we pray that we might be able to share, that we might be able to share in the same spirit which thou hast shared with us. Do give us thy guidance, thy wisdom, that we might do it in accordance with thy will. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I have a little trouble with the word peace because in my mind, peace means everything in Syria is over with. The land where Jesus was born is settled and peaceful and it's overwhelming to me. So I'm trying to bring my, I mean, I'm not gonna quit praying for those people of course I'm not, but we need peace right here in our own hearts, in our own neighborhoods, um, our friends and people that we don't even know. We need to pray for peace for those people. And just the smallest little uh, gesture to help somebody or smile at somebody, that does bring some peace. So. That's the type of peace I want us all to have each and every day as we live. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, you who guide the feet of our pilgrims along the path, guide our steps that we may follow the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
world changed forever on a night that seemed ordinary. No violent winds, no tumultuous thunderstorms, no startling lightning bolts piercing the dark. An ordinary night with quiet dignity. A beautiful night. But one like so many other beautiful nights. Nothing to make people feel expectant. The young couple came to Bethlehem in obedience to the law. No one ever imagined that Mary was carrying the Son of God. No fanfare, no suspicion from anyone that they were anything but an ordinary couple looking for a place to stay. No room, no room anywhere. Only the kindness of an innkeeper gave them a stable in which to bring forth the Savior of the world. As we began our celebration of the birth of our Messiah, let us remember that very unordinary night, the night when the angelic message was proclaimed to the world and it said, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May each of us remember the true gift of the blessed child and react with love, joy, and forgiveness to our fellow man. As God did when he sent his son unto the world that we might share eternal life with him. For no reason other than the love and forgiveness of our Father, does he offer the promise of salvation to his children who otherwise would live without hope and in darkness. Christmas is really about giving and forgiving. For our Savior plainly tells us that if we are to be forgiven, that we must forgive. The message of Christmas is forgiveness because our Father sent his only Son that we might receive his forgiveness. He sent his only Son to experience birth, death, and the resurrection that we might experience everlasting life because of that sacrifice. What a magnificent gift our Father sent his children. Let each of us take time to thank him for his son as we celebrate the season of joy. As we experience the giving and receiving of gifts, let us remember that it is not the gift, but it's the act of giving that is important. I would like to share with you a short story entitled, The Gold Wrapping Paper, this morning. Once there was a man who worked very hard to just keep food on the table to feed his family. This year, a few days before Christmas, his little five-year-old girl wrapped a gift for her father with the last piece of their gold wrapping paper. It was just a plain shoebox that she wrapped. But on Christmas morning, she was filled with excitement as she retrieved the gold box from under the Christmas tree. She rushed over to her father 
and gave him the gold box. He opened the box to find that it was empty. He scolded the little girl for using the last piece of the wrapping paper to wrap an empty box. The little girl looked up at him with sad tears rolling from her eyes and she said, Daddy, it is not empty. I blew kisses in it until it was all full. The father was crushed. He fell on his knees, putting his arms around her and begged her for forgiveness. She said, of course, you're my daddy. I love you and I will forgive you. A short time later, an accident took the life of this little girl. Her father kept the little gold box by his bed for the rest of his life, often opening it up to take out an imaginary kiss. Each of us have been given an invisible golden box filled with unconditional love and kisses from our children, our family, our friends, and our Heavenly Father. In this season of love and forgiveness, may our days be filled with the love of Christ. For Jesus told his disciple these words that as the Father loved him, even so he loved them. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. As we celebrate the true meaning of Christmas, let us realize that even the classical colors of Christmas denotes the sacrifice. The red represents the blood, and the green represents the resurrection and everlasting life. Let us remember that God's love is everlasting and that he always desires us to live in his love, mercy, and forgiveness. In the 59th chapter of Doctrine and Covenants, we're given these words. Wherefore, I give unto you a commandment, saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy might, mind, and strength. And in the name of Jesus Christ, thou shalt serve him. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. May each of us invite Jesus into our homes and hearts this Christmas season and beyond. Not the Jesus that we place in the nativity, but the living Christ. The only inn that Jesus cares to find shelter this season is within our hearts and within our homes. There was an old cobbler that wanted to see Jesus and have him spend the day with him in his cobbler shop. And the story goes. So it was with the old cobbler who dreamed that Chris, one Christmas Eve that Jesus would visit him the next day. He was convinced it would come true. So the next morning he got up and he went out and cut green boughs and decorated his little shop. He then sat down and waited for Jesus. Hours passed. Jesus didn't come. But an old man came, and he invited him in and noticed the holes in his shoes. He fitted the old man with a pair of shoes and dry socks and sent him on his way. He waited. An old woman came by. She was hungry, so he fed her a good meal. And after she finished, she left. 
and went away. He continued to wait, but as for Jesus, but he did not come. Then he heard a little boy crying out in the street. He could not find his parents and didn't know how to get back to his home. So the old man put on his coat and took the little boy to his home. When he got back to the shop, the streets were dark and empty, and he lifted his voice to heaven and said, Oh, Lord, why didn't you come? And then he heard the voice. And he said, Oh, shoe cobbler, lift up your heart. I kept my word. Three times I visited you. Three times you answered my needs. You just did not realize who I was or when I came. May God bless us as we ponder how we can become better servants during this season of celebration. Let each of us remember those who have lost loved ones, who will be alone, who are sick, and who need help. May each of us look for those who need to experience the same love and friendship that our Heavenly Father has extended to each of us. Today, as we prepare for our portion of His Holy Communion, many of us have come with needs that are known and unknown. Many come with a desire to make a commitment. How blessed we are to be able to come each month with the opportunity to recommit our lives, our talents, and our time to the work of the kingdom. And in doing so, we bless our families, we bless our congregation, and we also bless our community that God's purposes might be fulfilled in each of our lives. If we have misjudged another, let us ask for forgiveness. If another has misjudged us, let us forgive, for these are commandments of our Father. The opportunity to receive communion should bring us great joy this morning as we contemplate the grace of God. God's grace is always there for us. It has no limits as we practice forgiveness, desiring wholeness and reconciliation. What a joy to know that we worship a God of second chances. John the Baptist called people to repentance because he proclaimed that the kingdom of God was near. As we prepare today to share in the sacrament of communion. Let us remember the example of Jesus who turned his joy of closeness to the Father into service. Let each of us commit this morning to sharing the light of Christ with all those we meet. Now may we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive his Holy Communion, and may God bless us and keep us as we seek the gifts of love, joy, and forgiveness as we seek ways to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is my prayer. Amen.
invite each one of you now to kneel while the blessing is asked upon the bread. We'd invite you now to kneel while the blessing is out upon the wine.
Almighty God, as we have just celebrated that time in history where you brought your disciples together during a celebration of the Passover, a celebration well known to those of the house of Israel and declared to them that the bread was this my body, the wine this my blood. Not that, not to be remembered as that of the sacrificial lamb of that first Passover time, but to be understood as the Passover offering for all time and eternity. In the scriptures, you have said that your atonement in giving your body and blood is infinite. And we trust, O oh God, that it is infinite in time as well as infinite in degree and in scope. Let each one here, Lord, sense that that offering is suitable for them and is available for them, given for them. Help us to not be afraid to come to your altar always to seek blessing, to seek forgiveness, as we have been admonished this morning in our message, to seek greater understanding. Remind each one of us here, Lord, of your desire, deep desire, for each one to come and be with you, to be at work and at play with you in all that they do. Help us to be assured, O oh Lord, of your promises that a bruised reed you will not break, that those who are sick, those who suffer, those who are weak may come to you and that your grace will be sufficient, that your atonement will be sufficient. Lord, let us go from here being appreciative and thankful that you have taken each one of us, whether young or old, and have prepared a way for us, and that you have lifted from us the burden of having to somehow make you love us or desire us, but that you have demonstrated it in your high priestly offering of your own body for our salvation. Lift our heads, O Lord. Lift our spirits. Help us to share with one another, whether in this room or beyond, that limitless capacity you have to forgive, to love, and to lead. I pray to you, O God, on behalf of this congregation, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
May the Lord of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm trusting you to bring it. I'm trusting you to bring it.